<laughs> tells you that I'm not the smartest guy when it comes to using WebEx. So apologies again, and thanks, uh, Gary and Vijoy for inviting me. Um, so my name is Vinay Banai, and I'm the Antel GKE. GKE, as you know, stands for Google Kubernetes uh, Engine, which is a managed version of Kubernetes. Uh, I've managed the, some aspects of the networking in that, and uh, so today my topic is going to be about uh, since we're talking about scale, it's scale X. Uh, I wanted to talk about Kubernetes network policy logging, not network policy itself, but logging at scale. So, to, so what I will do is, uh, can you go to the next slide, Sam? Yeah, thank you. So here is the agenda. So. Uh, I'm going to go through the security layers, various security layers, and that will briefly talk about the Kubernetes network policy, what it means, and then I'll make a quick introduction to what network policy logging means, and then some of the use cases where the customers would require that kind of network policy and logging. And we'll spend a couple of slides uh, going into details about how it works. And then I'll uh, show you how the policy, when it logs, how it looks. And then I'll also briefly talk about the cloud logging because when you're running at scale, uh, you're obviously not logging at your nodes, but you're logging at some centralized uh, uh, component in your cloud. And that, so that's what cloud logging is. And towards the end, if I have some time, I will briefly talk about how the logs can be integrated with BigQuery. So for those of you who don't know, BigQuery is a, is a massive, uh, uh, ex, uh, uh, it's a tool that allows you to look at petabytes and petabytes of data and then uh, run SQL-like queries uh, to uh, gain insights and generate results in a few seconds. Next slide. All right, so what are the security layers? As we know, the security layers, uh, in, especially in a cloud kind of environment, you have like different kinds of uh, security layers that we need to build. One security to having, like in, a, in an old fashioned way of just having the firewalls is not enough, enough. So I'm just going to talk in this slide about the, the various layers. So obviously you have the infrastructure layers where we have firewalls that uh, prevent ingress egress from external world. And then you have uh, DDoS protection for uh, protecting yourself against volumetric attacks and edge protection. So these are all the infrastructure level um, protection that you need to have when you're running in a cloud. And then once you have, uh, that infrastructure level security. The second one is about the workload uh, security. What I mean by that is that, for example, if I took an uh, example of a Kubernetes cluster or Istio service mesh, then you would like to have some rules about who in your Kubernetes, uh, the, the workloads in your Kubernetes can talk, which uh, workloads can talk to which other uh, workloads in your Kubernetes clusters. And similarly, on the Istio service uh, policy, you have to specify policies. And so this boils down to in the Kubernetes something called the pod level security. So I'll go into that a little bit more detail. And then finally, towards the end, uh, there is also security layer at the role base. What I mean by that is that there are roles which are either assigned to humans or to resources, which grants them some identity, and you can assign some uh, uh, security profiles, uh, authentication and access guarantees to that role, and then you can use that to uh, perform various operations, not just as a human, but also, your, for example, for instance, your VM or like an application that can assume this role and do that. So these are all the various security layers. Uh, I just wanted to briefly touch on. Thank you. So now, what does Kubernetes network policy mean? So basically, in a sense, Kubernetes network policy allows you to have segmentation of workloads. So this is usually done through YAML abstraction to the Kubernetes API server that you tell that you tell, uh, I think I'm hearing some keyboards in the background. I don't know who that is. If they can go on mute, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Uh, so, so it's basically YAML abstraction of the network policy. And so what it allows you to do is it allows you to segment your workloads, as I said, based on uh, the various parts. And in Kubernetes, for those of you who are uh, kind of not fully familiar with all the concepts in Kubernetes, Kubernetes has this notion of namespaces and parts have this uh, key value pair. So these are called labels that you can associate with the, the parts so that you allows you to run some kind of a, a simple uh, matching queries to select parts and namespaces. So you can create uh, the segmentation policies based on the, the, the network policy. Now, 
there are the who uses them. So they're typically used by uh, by customers who are security conscious and also would like to have a uh, disaggregated security infrastructure. So what I mean by that is that typically, for example, in a in a large organization, there is a usually centralized network security center that is responsible for infrastructure level security. So they may not necessarily be interested in uh, managing the security or, or the, the, the process gets too long. You, they need to also manage the security policies for, let's say, the workload uh, communications. So this Kubernetes network policy allows you to disaggregate that and make it uh, uh, reduce the friction a little bit. So, uh, so and what else does new network uh, Kubernetes policies allow you? It allows you to specify both ingress and egress policies. And, and as I mentioned earlier, they, it allows you to specify that based on either namespaces uh, or and or part selectors. So there are different ways in which you can achieve that. Uh, one of them is using IP tables. Uh, then there is the OBS based mechanism where you can apply uh, these uh, policies. And the third one, which I'm going to focus, is called the eBPF, the extended back, um, Berkeley packet filters. So there are several vendors this this offer solution. So my goal is not to uh, talk about the vendors or like you know, but just want to focus on what eBPF means. Okay, great. So an example of a Kubernetes network policy. On the left hand side, you see a, what a network policy looks like, and on the right hand side, you have these various pods uh, in uh, various parts and an external device in a, in a in a cluster. So, for example, here you see two. Uh, namespaces. One is in yellow called allow PI, which is a namespace, and it has certain pods which have been labeled with the key service colon account summary. And then you have pods called PII database, which are tagged, the, those parts are tagged with the label PI database. And then you have an external database instance, which is outside of the Kubernetes cluster, which it doesn't have any pod annotations like labels and namespaces. It has a, a regular good old v4 ip uh, ipv4 address so what we're trying to do is in this network policy on the left hand side we're trying to define a policy for the pii database which is in the, the center which is in green what we're trying to do is we're trying to set up a rule saying that the pii parts are only allowed to accept traffic from uh the namespace allow pii and within that only the parts which are labeled with the account summary and this PII database is only allowed to talk to database instance, and it's not talked to, uh, is not allowed to talk to anybody else. So the, this is how it looks like. So if you look on the left hand side, you see the network policy has got a name, and then uh, in, this, in the specification, you see that um, on the ingress, uh, we are saying we only uh, accept uh, traffic from namespace selector, which says allow PII, and then within that namespace, only pods which are labeled with uh, the tag saying account summary. Similarly, on the, we are also telling the PII database uh, namespace that it cannot talk to anyone else, excepting on the egress side, it can only, is only allowed to talk to the IP address 172.17.0.1, and that too on ports TCP, uh, uh, on protocol TCP with the, on a particular port. So this is how you specify uh, network policy in Kubernetes. This is just an example. Next slide, please. So what are some of the use cases? So these, as I said, right, this allows, allowing the network policy allows, uh, using network, Kubernetes network policy allows the cluster admin to set security policies to prevent communication uh, pods from talking to the internet directly. And also uh, you can use namespaces to achieve multi-tenancy, like multi-tenancy also becomes pretty uh, big. Uh, for example, if you have a Kubernetes clusters and you group your uh, organizational boundaries or like you know, different departments or groups in namespaces, then you can set up these kind of rules. Uh, so one thing I just wanted to point out, I think I didn't mention it in the previous slide. In Kubernetes, we don't use IP addresses for identifying pods and namespaces. There are labels because in uh, pods could have an IP address which keeps changing based on how the when the Kubernetes um, master detects uh, for various scheduling reasons and resource constraints, it might move parts around. So, so we cannot depend on IP address. So, so what we do is that we use this label so that we can track even if the parts move. So just wanted to point that out. 
Uh, and we can also use one of the other use cases, the exfiltration threads, for especially the example I was giving in the previous slide where the PII database has some data being stored and we want to make sure that the data does not get uh, exfiltrated to anyone else, but only to uh, designated entities. And the, the last two points that I wanted to men mention was, this is great. So you have network policy, you're preventing your parts from talking to each other and you have a policy that everyone is adhering to, but how do I know it's working? So what that is where the policy logging comes in. Policy logging allows you to specify, uh, it's, it, it's, it's a feature that we offer in uh, Kubernetes policy, uh, network policy that allows you to track what connections, what parts have spoke, are connecting to what other parts, and based on what are the policies that allowed that connection. And if there is a connection that was made and it was not allowed, authorized, and it got denied, you also log that. So this is very important for audit log, especially for financial industries, for banks, and things of that nature where they need to comply with legal rules. They want this logging where uh, it allows them to specify not only uh, rules, but also uh, what is happening with those rules. Are the rules being enforced? And if they're enforced, what are the connections that are coming in? So you can go back and look at the, the audits. Next slide, please. So um, <clears throat> how does it <clears throat> how does it work? So I'm going to, as I said, there are several vendors uh, which are trying to offer these solutions. So GKE, I'm just going to talk about GKE. Um, this, so we use Data Plane V2, which is uh, in Google we call it Data Plane V2, which is in beta right now, and it's based on eBPF. So eBPF, for those of you who don't know, a quick introduction is like eBPF has been BPF has been there in the next kernel for a long time. So this, it allows, it's a mechanism for you to, without necessarily using kernel modules, recompiling the kernel, inject some microcode into the kernel to at some designated hook points that allows you to process a packet without necessarily having to shunt the packet between the user space and kernel and take all those penalties. So, so, so this has become, um, let's see, somebody's trying to say something here, okay. Uh, so it is also uh, supported for, the, the support exists only for Linux nodes, and there's no support for eBPF in Windows nodes today. And one of the features of this is network policy and logging is, these are features that are built in as part of the data plan V2. So meaning you don't need to enable a new feature, it's just like it, it comes uh, with data plan V2. Next slide, please. Uh, Gary, really quick, I think is somebody trying to, um, Ask a question because I see this message is popping on my screen. Okay, I guess not. All right, so how does this work? So this uh, represents uh, a Kubernetes master at the top, which is in gray box. And then at the bottom, we show a Kubernetes worker node. And this is a, um, we're not, I'm just showing only one node, how it looks like. So when you specify the network policy and, uh, and associated logging uh, aspect of it as a and program, the Kubernetes object in the master, there is an agent which runs uh, on each of the Kubernetes node, which watches the CRD resource. And it takes that, consumes that policy, and then uses eBPF programming to enforce the policy in the kernel. And so eBPF not only does policy, but it also does data plane, it does service resolution and connection tracking and things like that. And then most important, what it does is, as and when packets come in, whether it's admitted or denied, those are logs. Those are logged and those things, we have the ability to take those logs and metrics and then feed it into a logging pipeline, which I'll get into in a little bit more detail in the next slides. So what this logging allows you to do is you can centralize, yeah, if you can centralize, it allows you to centralize all your logging across all your various nodes in the Kubernetes cluster. And there you can run uh, lots of uh, queries and analysis. And I'll, the last uh, slides, I will talk about that a little bit more. So a little bit more details within the Kubernetes node itself. So what exactly happens? So let's look at this example where we, we have a policy. So, so let, let me give you the set of the background for this slide. So there are two pods, 
application front end, application back end. These are the two uh, parts that are running in the Kubernetes node. And then you have NetD, which is stands for Advanced Network Daemon and Lock. Like these are like you know, system daemons that are running there. And what it does is we have a network policy which says for uh, front end, we say the action is allow. For back end, any traffic is denied. So let's say if these rules are set up from the, the from your neck on your pod, when traffic does come in, the eBPF components that are running in the kernel that has this policy uh, configured, they will, when the traffic comes in, if it's headed towards the front end, it allows the traffic. And for traffic that is destined to back end, it gets denied. But at the same time, what it does, it goes and logs them. And that's where, when you enable network policy logging, you have the ability to see those logs either locally or on a, on a cloud logging console. Next slide, please. Yes. So now, slightly switching gears. Now, what is network policy logging? It is, it is as I mentioned earlier, you have a network policy, and then you can also have logging. So those are two separate uh, actions, right? You could have network policy enabled, but you may not have policy logging in it because, as you know, policy logging consumes some amount of CPU, quite a bit of disk space, and it also gets you, you will be charged and things like that, right? So some people may not want it, but for those customers who are security conscious and are subject to uh, government rules and regulations, they might need this log. So in our, once you enable logging, it's done through a CRD. So you say, I want logging enabled, and you can also have exclusion rules saying that, hey, I, don't, I want to only uh, log traffic going to this specialized pods, even though the policy enabled, but I don't care about logging for all other policy rules because it reduces the amount of traffic that you have. And so some of the annotations we carry with these logs include the source part, the destination part, and, and the traffic was allowed, denied based on what policies, things like that. And these are all, they get uploaded to Google Cloud uh, Logging Engine. And then, so what does Google, the Cloud Logging enables you to do? It, number one, it gives you scale. You can store huge amounts of uh, logs. It can go into petabytes. So if you have a large cluster, 5,000 nodes, 10,000 nodes, uh, large Kubernetes clusters, and you're enforcing policy, imagine you have tons and tons of traffic coming in. So it allows you to, st to store this traffic. You can search, you can um, set up your own analysis pipelines, and you can also enable alerts. So, and the other cool thing about this thing is now that it's including, uh, it's in Google uh, Cloud Logging Engine, you can export these logs to PubSub for, for example, you want to send it to uh, like, you know, Splunk or, your own proprietary uh, uh, log search uh, cluster or to BigQuery. So th these are all the advantages that you get once you use uh, Google Cloud Log. Next slide, please. So this is an example of a, how a, a log that has been exported to the Cloud Logging Engine looks like. So on the right-hand side, you see the box. This is a connection on uh, what we're doing is we're looking in the direction of egress, meaning it is a source node. It's trying to send a packet. As you know, we can log these events both at ingress and also egress. So here we are looking at the logging at the egress. Um, so here, what we're saying is that there's a, uh, we are sending a packet to 10.60.1.2 on a UDP port. The direction is egress and the source IP of the pod that is sending it out. So, now, how does it look like on the, the, the cloud logging? It comes as a JSON payload. So here we have, uh, obviously, in addition to the IP addresses and the port and the protocol, you also have the annotations I was talking about earlier, right? You have the pod name and the pod namespace, uh, and then it also tells you what is the disposition, uh, uh, like the, in this case, the disposition is allowed, meaning the policy that you set up allowed this traffic to go out. And it also gives you the ID of the, the node where this policy was enforced. And, uh, and it also tells you what was the policy that allowed it. So here, like as I said, in the network policy, each policy has got a name, and the name of the policy says allow all, and it's in the namespace default, and that's, how, that's the reason why this traffic was allowed to go in. So this is all, this is all the rich set of information that comes in in a, in a log, and that gets logged in the cloud logging pipeline. Next slide, please. So, um, this is, I think, the one of the last slides. So what I wanted to talk to you briefly about the logs and the role of BigQuery here, right? So, uh, so the stack driver is 
one of our log storage um, products at Google that allows you to consume all the logs that are coming from the GCP, audit logs, service logs. So it comes through a centralized API. You can also send it from like, you know, your uh, GK instance is running on other clouds also. So once the tra traffic all comes in, as, as I said, we can set up this exclusion filter saying that I don't want to track only these logs because log storage does cost you money. So you want to be, uh, if you don't, if you, if you have no reason to store a log, you can choose not to uh, store those by using exclusion filters. And then we also have the ability to send these logs to cloud storage or to PubSub, as I mentioned, right? because you want to send it to other pipelines that you might have, or to BigQuery. Now, for the logs, so BigQuery, as you know, gives you like a rich set of tools for you to analyze, like, you know, billions and billions of records. I think uh, last time I checked, you can also have like a trillion records that you can, you can process in just a matter of seconds that you can uh, do joins using SQL like query and then it's a, based on a columnar uh, input storage. So we can run those queries so you can export your uh, logs from Stackdriver to BigQuery to analyze with joining other data that you might have relevant. So this is just an illustration purposes um, about how all these things fit together. So with this, I think this is the last slide. Uh, next, Sam. Yeah, so, so what does uh, integration of uh, Stackdriver and BigQuery allows you to do that? Like, you know, I, I already mentioned all of this. Uh, Stackdriver, if you just were to use Stackdriver, you have all the records sitting there using uh, the, the logs that have been exported using the cloud logging pipeline. And that allows you to uh, look at the logs, you can set up queries, you can uh, also derive some metrics and alerts based on those logs. And you also have the ability to uh, export these logs to BigQuery, and then you can use BigQuery to uh, join with other data that you might have to like, you know, um, get some insights into your traffic and tra traffic patterns in your cluster. And then the, the good news is you can pass a huge amounts of data in, in just a matter of seconds. So with that, I think I'm gonna end. Next slide, Sam. So I have a couple of references, like there is a Google blog post I would uh, recommend Highly take a look at it, which is about how we are using eBPF to uh, enable logging and network security policies and other cool features on GKE. And there's also a user guide on, uh, on our website. Uh, with that, I'm open to taking any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Vinay. Uh, do we have any questions? Okay, I think, um, check one more time. I think we're clear. Vinay, thank you very, very much. Thank you.